we're back. Uh, and as I mentioned last time, today we are going to be getting into plotting and making some graphs, which is nice. Uh, and uh, we're going to be doing it with some, you know, base R uh, plotting tools. And, you know, this is always good. You know, you want to be able to look at your data just in the, in the way that you want to look at your data directly or look at summary statistics for your data so you get more used to it. Plotting, looking at your data visually is a really great way to start understanding what's actually going on in your data. I really don't recommend doing anything. Uh, you know, I mean, you want to at least look at your data a little bit. Uh, it's, it's hard to get a really good sense of what's going on without some sort of graphical idea. So let's talk about how to do that. So we're working with the exact same data set we've been working for the past couple of videos. I used Library Foreign to read in this Stata data set from the Woldridge textbook. Uh, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, just looking at the plot command. So the plot command itself is pretty magical. It sort of knows what you want to do. If you feed it the right kind of information, it will just sort of know what it is that you want. And this is going to come back to us a couple of times. Uh, both right here and in the future when we are plotting some other things that you would expect it not to be able to plot, but it just sort of knows what to do, which is pretty awesome. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just do a very basic plot. We're just going to do a scatter plot of two different variables. So last time we looked at the correlation between education and wages. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, so but this time we're going to look at the plot of education and wages. So I'm going to say uh, wage one, uh, wage, the wage data set, the wage variable from the wage one data set. We're going to plot that against wage one education. If I do that, oops, I think I reversed the order here. So the first uh, element that goes in here is whatever you want to be on the x axis, and the second part is whatever you want to go on the y axis, which of course makes perfect sense, which is why I didn't do it the first time. So uh, what we have here uh, is a plot. You can see it uh, emerge over here on the right. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it better since we're focusing on plots. Uh, and you can see the different you know, years of education. We can see the, uh, the different levels of wage. You can see you know, the generally positive relationship that we have there. Uh, so, and that's it. That's basically how we can create a scatter plot. Uh, so a couple of things. So first of all, note uh, that uh, we have some, you know, ugly little uh, labels here. Uh, so let's talk about how to, you know, make our, our, day, our, our, our plot look a little bit nicer, at least with some titles on the X and Y axes. Uh, so we're going to add in some new uh, options here. The X label, uh, we're going to want to just say education rather than, you know, wage one dollar sign education. And the Y label, we're going to have be wage. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add a title to the whole thing with main. Main is going to be our main graphic, our, our main graphics title. Uh, and we're going to just call that uh, relationship of wage and education. Okay. Uh, now this is this line is a little bit too long to fit on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and enter and put it on two lines. This works perfectly well in R. As long as R knows there's no way that the command was just finished, it'll keep reading until it gets to the end. So if I run this. Boom, there we go. So it's the exact same graph as before, but we have an X axis label, we have a Y axis label, and we have a nice title on there, okay? So what we've made here is a plot looking at relationship of wage and education, great. Uh, now, sometimes you want to add stuff to a plot. Now, the nice thing about R is that you don't necessarily have to get everything in one command. If I want to add something to this plot, I can. Uh, it's, there, there are some commands that I can just add after the fact, and it will know that I want to modify the graph that's already open. So let's do one of those commands, AB line. This puts a nice straight line on the graph. So let's say, for example, that I want to put a line on here uh, showing the average wage. So you can sort of see, uh, you know, how likely it is that you're going to be above the average wage at different levels of education, right? That might be a useful thing to have. So AB line, what AB line is, is it's a function that takes two arguments, uh, a intercept and a slope. And it just puts a straight line on it, right? You know how, you know, a line works. You have an intercept, you have a slope that gives you a nice straight line. So if I were to, for example, uh, put a intercept of zero and a slope of one, that would put a line on there that had an intercept of zero and a slope of one, right? A 45 degree line. Uh, so that's not what we want here. We wanted the average uh, wage on there. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the intercept of this line be the average wage. So it's gonna be the mean of wage one, dollar sign wage, great. And then the slope of that line, I want it to be a nice flat line, just showing the average wage is going to be zero. So it's going to be an intercept at the average of wage, and it's going to be a flat line. So if I put that on, 
boom, right there we go. So you can see that at the very low levels of education, nobody's above the average wage. And as you get further to the right, more years of education, the number of years of education goes up and up and up. Now, there are infinite numbers of, uh, of options here that you could do. You want it to be in different kinds of colors. You want to have different numbers on the axis uh, uh, ticks instead of 0, 5, 10, and 15. You can do it. You just got to look in the documentation and see how to do it. I'm not going to go through all the options. It's basically impossible to get everything. Further thing to note, uh, there is in an entirely separate way of doing graphs in R that I'm not really going to talk about until the advanced versions of these videos called ggplot2. If you want graphs that look really, really nice and you're willing to put in the time for it, ggplot2, just go to those videos. But that's not what we're going to do today. So we have a basic scatter plot here. That's what we're going to start out with. Uh, next, what we're going to look at is some, some graphs that uh, are more for... Um, when you have one variable. So for example, we might want a histogram or a density plot, right? So histograms, uh, we can do those pretty straightforward. It's just the hist command, right? So we do hist and we do a variable that might have, uh, we wanna look at the histogram, we just wanna look at the distribution of education, say. If we do that, and you put in the correct name of the variable, it will do the histogram of education. And of course, we could rename the X and Y uh, axes and the title of the graph in the exact same way as before with X lab, Y lab, and main. So there's a histogram. Uh, maybe we want a density function instead of a histogram. So instead of these bins, it will be a, a nice smooth curve. Uh, we can do that again with plot, uh, but we don't just put the variable in there itself. Our, uh, the plot tends to be weird things when you just feed a single variable in there. Uh, we want it to plot a density. So we're going to feed it a density. So we're going to say plot this density for me and the density of wage one dollar sign education. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a density object in here, saying take the density of education. And then I'm going to feed that into plot. It's going to plot out the density for me, just like that. Looks a whole lot like the histogram because it's a similar idea. Okay. Um, so we have density plot right there. All right. So what's next? Uh, we might, for example, uh, also want to see a, a bar plot. That uh, would be one thing that you might want to see. Uh, bar plots are pretty standard, right? So let's say uh, we want to do education again. We want to look at the, the different values of education specifically. We don't want it to be binned. We want to see every single different value. So we're going to do the bar plot function. Uh, now for bar plot, what is a bar plot really? Well, it's, a bar plot is taking each value of the variable on the x-axis and showing you how many people are in that value, which is the exact same thing as a table. So it's not too surprising that bar plot wants you to feed it a table. So we're going to feed it a table. We're going to say to take the table of education. Now, if you remember from the single variable summary statistics, if we just do this by itself, this will give us all the different values of education and how many people have that level of education. So we feed that into bar plot, and it will give us that exact thing, but in a bar plot format, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we can do this, of course, with any of the different values. It doesn't have to be education. So if, say, for example, we want to say, look at the distribution of how many people are married. Do that, right? There we go. Now, that access is not particularly informative. You probably want to put a label on there, uh, but this is exactly what it's doing. We can also do stacked bar plots in very similar ways. Think about what a stacked bar plot is. Stacked bar plot, in this case, would say, okay, are they married or are they not married? But then it would split up these two categories into some other thing. So last time we looked at a cross tabulation between being married and being in an SMSA, a metropolitan statistical area. Uh, uh, and so let's do that here. So to do that cross tabulation, we just did a table, but with two different variables in it. We said wage one married against wage one SMSA, right? And that gave us the table with the different values in there. So all we gotta do is wrap that in bar plot. And away we go, we have a stacked bar plot. Again, we'd wanna label that one a little bit better to make it look good. So these are some of the basic graph types, and these, this is not a whole long list of graphs so far, but this is going to be able to get you pretty far. Right? We talked about scatter plots, which most of the time you're going to want a scatter plot. You know, that, that's, that's at least for me the graph that I use the most often. Uh, we talked about how to label the, that graph as well, and those labels can apply to the different other kinds of graphs that we talked about too. We talked about how to get histograms, and we talked about how to get density plots, which are kind of like histograms, but they're nice and smooth instead of binned. Uh, we talked about how to get bar plots. Bar plots 
being you know, a bar graph, right? We were creating bar graphs here uh, for using a table, right? Which is basically a bar graph, but in, in a table format instead of an image. And we feed that table into the bar plot function and it will give us back a bar plot. Uh, and we can do that either with a single variable to get a regular old bar plot, or we can do it with two variables at once to get a stacked bar plot. Uh, one kind of plot that we've not covered here is a line plot. Okay, so let's talk about how we might do a line plot and then we'll be done. So often you might use a line plot if say you had uh, some variable that you wanted to track over time. Uh, now this is not a data set where we have that, but let's, let's do a different kind of line plot. Let's say we want to plot the average uh, of wage over education. Okay, so think about what that's saying. We want to get the average wage within each level of education, and then we want to plot that. That sounds a lot like the aggregate command that we talked about last time. So let's do that. So we're going to do the aggregate command, and we want uh, wage as a function of education. We're using the wage1 data set, and we want the mean function. So if we run that immediately, we can see it's going to give us the different uh, wages for each level of education. And this is basically what a data set that you're going to want to do with a line plot is going to look like, right? We have a running variable over here. We want the average, uh, or we want whatever value it is that we're putting on the line plot on the y-axis over here on the right, right? So if you had a, a time variable, you know, this might be something like uh, GDP, and this might be a time variable like a year, but it's the same idea. So all we got to do to plot this as a line plot is just throw this in plot, right? This will do a pretty good job. Now, if I do this right now, it'll give me a scatter plot. I don't want that, I want a line. But if we wanna figure out how to do a line, all we gotta do is look at the help file and it will tell us, hey, what, how, how do we choose it? We scroll around until we find that the type variable is gonna tell us what kind of plot we're doing. We want a line plot, so all we gotta do is say type equals L and that will give us a line plot. There we go, so that's how we can do a line plot as well. So, we have covered uh, bar plots, we've covered histograms, we've covered density plots, we've covered scatter plots, and we've covered line plots. That should be good to hold you for a while. If you're needing to graph something other than that, again, as always, Google is your friend. All right, uh, so that's the basics of summary statistics. We've got one video left in the basics series, and that is linear regression uh, and how to work with regression objects in general. So I will see you for that. Thank you. Bye-bye.